coming up on show 640. The Ford Mustang Mac E countdown is on. Lucid Motors break ground. And what's the real story behind Tesla Gigafactory 4 choosing Berlin? Those stories and many more coming up on your podcast for today. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're listening in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. This is the edition for Thursday, 14th of November. And what I do is I go through every EV story I can find to save you time. The gang at myev.com, as you will know if you're a regular listener, if you listen to this show online, maybe Facebook or YouTube, you'll see the logo in the in the, uh, in the the show logo there. You'll know about myev.com. But if you're new to the podcast, let me explain. They connect buyers and sellers and educate future buyers, those that are EV curious in the USA. Check out myev.com. So let's kick off with news about the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The countdown is definitely on until we find out all of the juicy details this Sunday. But for now, we'll have to make do with this YouTube teaser, which literally went online just a few minutes ago. More than 50 years after the Mustang turned the industry on its head, a new horse is joining the stable, sharing the iconic Mach name. An all-electric, zero-emission game-changer delivering guilt-free performance for the next generation of thrill seekers. The newest member of the Mustang family, Mustang Mach-E. Well, Ford's upcoming battery electric crossover SUV won't just feature Mustang-inspired styling, it'll also wear the famed sports car's name, officially christened Mustang Mach-E. The Blue Oval's latest EV is due to show its face on Sunday. This weekend, November 17th, says Greg Fink, for Motor1.com. Ford are going to live stream the event if you're interested. They're going to have the assistance of some celebrity power as well. Actor Idris Elba, who is set to join the uh, Mac E on stage. Now, if prospective buyers like what Ford is showing off, they can, of course, do what Tesla offer when they reveal a car, what VW did with the ID3. You can go online immediately and order one. The end of the presentation is slated to be about 9.30 in the evening, Eastern Time. Blimey, that's going to be 2.30 in the morning here. Uh, But if you want to, you can reserve a Mustang Mach-E with your $500 refundable deposits. Although I don't imagine in this country I'll be able to put my money down on one. But if you're in the US, I'm sure they would gladly take a deposit. And as the car won't have a manual gearbox, what with EVs being as easy to drive as an automatic, they're certainly missing a trick if they don't call the car the Mac-E Auto. Mac-E Auto. Mac-E Auto. I'll get my coat. Time to move on. Uh, Lucid Motors are next. After almost three years, the Tesla competitor has finally confirmed Local Planning and Zoning Commission of Arizona approval of their multi-year site plan, and they revealed that last week. Land grading has just begun, and the company estimates that production of the Lucid will start at the end of next year, 2020, according to ibtimes.com, now Ativa, or Ativa, or Ativa, which is the parent company of Lucid, couldn't get the funding uh, to get the Lucid Air, which is their EV, unveiled back in 2016 into production, but with a $1 billion investment from Saudi Arabia through the Kingdom's Sovereign Wealth Fund last year. Issues concerning the eventual rollout seem to have dissolved. They've got some money, got some funding, and it is full steam ahead for Lucid. So Volkswagen are next, and VW of America today marked the start of construction of their electric vehicle production facility at the Chattanooga site. Production begins in 2022, so they are starting early on getting it ready. Volkswagen of North America's assembly base uh, for all of their EVs is going to be the Chattanooga site. VW began long-range EV production earlier this month at Zwickau in Germany for the ID3. Of course, that's a car that won't be going to the US. They'll be rolling out assembly of that worldwide, though, including Anting and Foshan in China in 2020 and then the German cities of Emden and Hanover in 2022 whereas the US Chattanooga site North America's hub for EV manufacturing after investing $800 million in the facility and adding about 1,000 jobs the production there will be the ID Cross the kind of SUV more style uh, car it's going to be assembled uh, in the US in 2022 but it'll already be made in Zwickau earlier than that 
Okay, I mentioned this at the start of the show. What's the real story? What's the truth behind Tesla choosing Berlin and the surrounding area for Gigafactory Europe? We'd heard recently on in the investor call that they would be announcing the location before the end of the year. We know that Tesla have their German site already after buying Groman a couple of years ago. We know that they make the robots for the factories and then stick them on planes from Germany. So we know they have a German base already. And then more recently, Elon did say that Germany is the leading contender for Gigafactory Europe. Now, there is a great analysis of the decision from Bloomberg, two of Bloomberg's reporters. And they mention that uh, a lady called Ramona Pop, great name, by the way, Ramona Pop, is a mayor of Berlin and senator for the Economy, Energy and Enterprise. Uh, She responded to almost like the bidding process, the unofficial bidding process, with a two-page letter that waxed lyrical about Elon Musk as a as a pioneer, a visionary, and offered financial sweeteners to attract Tesla to a city that is bustling with vibrant tech and a network of auto research institutes, says Bloomberg. Two federal states that border France also touted their virtues. Of course, Groman, which is the Tesla Groman these days, is about 650 kilometres away in Germany to the southwest. Uh, but nowhere near Berlin. Uh, The European Gigafactory is going to be on the outskirts of Berlin, slightly different administrative area, but still close enough. They are going to have, though, the R&D centre, engineering and design centre, I should say, within the city limits of Berlin. Labour costs in eastern Germany are generally lower, and the traditional engineering hubs in the southern part of the country have higher labour costs, more unionised as well. Many people, because of that, were looking at somewhere like Czech, possibly Poland, uh, for even cheaper labour costs. But I don't know. (laughs) I don't know a lot, by the way. What do I know? But is labour cost the real issue here? I mean, probably not, because they've gone with Germany, where it is more expensive. But as per a Reuters article, while the average combustion engine does take three and a half hours to build, the average transmission takes 2.7 hours to build, for instance. In comparison to that, an EV motor on average, takes about one hour to assemble, according to Alex Partners in a global automotive outlook study. Now, the biggest cost factor is still, of course, battery packs. That amounts to between a third and a half of a a total EV's cost. So there's more than just the motor to make if you are comparing the human cost of it. Right, back to Bloomberg. The area where Tesla plans to put the factory is called Grunheide, just east of Berlin in the state of Brandenburg. And it's got quick access to the autobahn, links to public transport. It's a site, actually, that BMW were considering before deciding against it and choosing Leipzig for their production. And it's an area which I've seen people on Twitter today find that the old BMW plans from 2001 look at the footprint of that area, which was on the original BMW plans, uh, where Tesla now say they're going to be. And actually, if you draw on Google Maps using the same scale, it's a huge site. If someone's drawn the outline of the BMW plans from 17 years ago, which Tesla are rumoured to be using the same area, and they've overlaid that using the same scale to the Chinese Gigafactory, for instance, and Berlin, well, the area they've got is huge in Germany. At the minute, forestry, although they add low-grade forestry, but work will now begin to cl- to clear that forestry and Tesla have committed to planting not two, but three times as many trees as they clear in a local area. And why did they choose the area? Why not choose central Berlin? Why not choose somewhere else? Well, the government of Brandenburg, like I say, one of five federal states of the former communist East, they've been lobbying hard to win Elon Musk's favour, and they offered 100 million euros in aid. Reuters also report on the financial aid being given to all car makers to ensure that the national pride of Germany's dominance continues. German car makers themselves and the suppliers of the, the tens of thousands of parts are tapping into a 1 billion euro fund. That's 1.1 billion US dollars. That's been set up by Germany to increase battery cell production and further aided by a government-funded research facility to increase battery cell development know-how. A key section from the Bloomberg piece is this, and this is kind of like the highlight, right? Uh, Musk had a demand. I'm sure he had many. (laughs) Anyway, Musk had a demand that was as clear as it was hard to execute for bureaucratic Germans. 
He wanted to build the site as swiftly as the Gigafactory in Shanghai, according to Brandenburg's economy minister, uh, Jörg Steinbeck. And I'm not surprised. Elon would have said, look, China can do it in nine months. Well, more than nine, 15 months-ish, because if you count it from when they first acquired the land, depending on your start date to when they first broke soil, as it were. So he would have said, I no doubt he would have said, look, what China can do, Germany is economically, Germany, great reputation for building quality cars, but in recent months, economy in the doldrums. They're not in recession, by the way, but they're having some difficult quarters financially as a country and as an auto industry as well struggling. And so I can imagine that perhaps the Germans saw that as a challenge. And I can confirm, whilst I don't broadcast this show from Germany, we are in Europe. Yes, bureaucracy can somewhat get in the way. Quite a lot, actually. So, it's interesting here whether somebody in Germany, like in China, will take the lead, will be a strong force in the the administrative parts. So the planning permission goes in, it's fast-tracked through, things get done. You know, Elon Musk is not one for waiting two, three, four years for plans to be approved and go through various committees and bodies, as we've seen with the airport, the new airport, which the Tesla facility is going to be nearby, has been in construction for over 10 years and has been plagued by all sorts of administration issues to do with health and safety and fire suppression systems. And and it's a running joke in the area that they've been building an airport for 10 years, uh, more than that, and still not ready. Okay, that's uh, a look into some of the politics, some of the, the bargaining that's been going on behind the scenes for the Gigafactory in Berlin. We know, by the way, Elon said it many times, all future Gigafactories are going to be all under one roof. They said that the, the mistake of having two facilities in the US, Giga One, Nevada, Fremont production, having to move the battery packs which come out of Giga One and move them to Fremont, is just, uh, they do it, but it's... Uh, a logistical headache that they could do without. So all future ones, all under one roof, which of course will make things easier. Okay, while we're talking batteries, there is a new mega, mega, mega Tesla battery facility being installed. It's a 60 megawatt set of lithium-ion mega packs, utility scale batteries uh, that are like the big brother versions of what you put in your garage with the power pack. They store power, they return it to the grid when needed. According to Santa Barbara Independent newspaper, uh, Southern California, SoCal Edison turned to storage after a natural gas power plant was denied by the commission and the existing Pika plants, like many gas-powered Pika plants, are facing retirement. There are smaller 10 and 20 megawatt battery storage facilities also planned for the area and a second one for this part of California that is getting the first one. Tesla, staying with them by the way, has also promised to incrementally roll out more supercharging stations over time, Uh, V3 uh, supercharging stations with an emphasis on their new technology and, according to Inside EVs, a huge 28-stall supercharger station is going to be constructed to connect Los Angeles and Phoenix. And whilst we're talking supercharger stations. From an article I found on buffaloexpress.com, the supercharger station at Kettleman City, which is something that I hear uh, Ryan talk about on his Ride the Lightning podcast a fair bit. It's one where there is batteries, there's storage, there's a lounge, you can buy merch at Kettleman City. Uh, It's the biggest in the US. There are 40 supercharger stalls. That's being upgraded to V3 stalls. And I'm sure they'll try and get, if not all 40, some of them done before Thanksgiving, as many as they can before Christmas as well. I don't see queues over here. There are fewer Teslas on the roads where I am. I do see the pictures online, on Twitter, on the on news websites of big, big queues around holiday time at supercharging stations. And we don't see that. I don't see that. But, uh, of course, you know, the quicker you can get cars charged, the throughput increases, and that's going to be key to supercharger V3. Finally, this is great news for Los Angeles. The city of LA has installed... EV charging stations directly attached to 130 street light poles. It's something that we are doing a lot in London, I believe with Ubitricity. And now Los Angeles are doing the same. Hundreds more planned. The streamlined solution to EV charging 
has been deployed in other European cities, but not much in the US. According to Bradley at Electrek, the city's conversion of streetlights to LEDs actually made the solution possible. You'll pay between $1 and $2 an hour. Parking is free while you're outside the streetlight. Charging your EV and the charging networks operating these are ChargePoint, EVgo, Flow and Green Lots. And here is Angelica Frias, who is the smart city strategist for the city of Los Angeles, to tell us more. The Bureau of Street Lighting is in charge of the operation and maintenance of the street lighting network system of over 222,000 street lights throughout the city of Los Angeles. The inspiration for the curbside charging station was really born out of the city's adoption of a sustainable plan, LA's renewed deal. In order to increase electric vehicle usage, the city needs to provide accessible charging to reduce range anxiety. Since the city of Los Angeles installed LED fixtures citywide, we decided instead of attaching an additional piece of equipment to attach the electric vehicle charger on our streetlight. Great news, great solution for those where on-street parking is commonplace where you don't want more street furniture and you can tap into the electricity supply already going into streetlights. All right, question of the week time right now with myev.com. If you had to pick one upside to driving an EV, what would it be? And you can't pick two, three, four or five. You can't even have one and a half. You've got to pick one. I'm being mean to you. But that's your challenge if you choose to accept it. Email me hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on socials. Thank you to 254 patrons of this podcast who keep me going. If you'd like to be one, check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology. If you would like to get any of the archive shows, they're online for free. The new ones come at you every day. If in return for me doing all of this work, and normally very late at night as well, by the way, uh, when all is quiet outside and I get to sit down for a, a couple of hours and write and, and prep and plan and edit and record this show. If in return for that, you can share this podcast with someone or somebody, some a, a group, maybe even leave a review online. It would really, really help me out. In the meantime, come and say hi on my socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. Catch you soon. Remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.